In these videos, we're going to show you how to upgrade your desktop or laptop computer's memory yourself. Sure, you could pay a computer shop to upgrade your computer's memory, but as you'll see, it's really very easy to do yourself and save between $40 and $75 in fees. We'll begin by learning a little bit about computer memory. Memory, also called RAM, or random access memory, is used to hold the information the computer is working on. This is different from the computer's hard drive. The hard drive is where Windows and your files and programs are stored. When you power your computer on, it reads all of the information needed to start Windows from the hard drive into memory. Once Windows is loaded, the computer loads any programs or files you open from the hard drive into memory. The reason for this is the computer's memory, or RAM, is hundreds of times faster than the computer's hard drive. This allows the computer to perform faster. If your computer doesn't have enough memory, it has to do something called memory swapping. Memory swapping happens when the computer runs out of memory space and moves part of what it's working on to a temporary file called a swap file on the hard drive. When the computer needs some of the data in the swap file, it reads it from the hard drive back into memory. Reading and writing to the hard drive this way is hundreds of times slower than just reading and writing from memory. This causes the computer to slow down and often stop what it's doing, making you wait until the memory swap is finished. Adding memory to your computer is the only way to minimize memory swapping. How much memory your computer needs depends on the operating system you're using and what kinds of programs and files you're using on your computer. Windows XP needs a minimum of 1 GB of RAM to run smoothly. Windows Vista and Windows 7 need at least 2 GB of RAM to run smoothly. This is with normal computer use, such as going to web pages, checking email, watching videos, and playing music. Basically what most people do most of the time. If you often run lots of programs at the same time, work with large photos, do graphics creation or video editing where the computer is dealing with lots of large files, you should probably double the RAM. 2 gigabytes for Windows XP and 4 gigabytes for Windows Vista and Windows 7. To see how much RAM your computer has in Windows XP, go to Start, right-click on My Computer, and choose Properties. In Windows Vista and Windows 7, click the Start Orb, right-click on Computer, and go to Properties. Now you know how much memory your computer has and how much it needs to run smoothly. The next consideration is the type of memory your computer has. You need to know the type of memory your computer has because you need to get the same kind of memory to match it. Since 2000, there have been four types of RAM used in computers. These are Rambus, DDR, DDR2, and DDR3. Rambus and DDR were in use in new computers between 2000 and 2004. DDR2 took over in late 2004 and was the main type of RAM until mid-2009 when DDR3 began to take over. DDR2 and DDR3 are both still used in computers today, but DDR3 is becoming more prevalent. If you know when your computer was made, you should have a good idea of the type of RAM that it has in it, or at least you can narrow it down to a few possibilities. Desktop and laptop memory come in different packages. DDR SD RAM sticks for desktops, and shorter SODIMM sticks for laptops. If you know the make and model of your computer, or the motherboard in your computer, you can use one of the online tools provided by memory makers to find the type of RAM your computer has. Crucial.com is a great resource. They have a system scanner that you let run, and it tells you the type of memory that's in your computer and the bandwidth or speeds of memory that your computer can accept. It also tells you the number of memory slots your computer has, which ones already have memory sticks in them, and which ones are empty that you can add memory sticks to, along with the maximum capacity per slot and the maximum capacity overall. If for some reason the system scanner doesn't work for you, you can also choose the manufacturer, the product line, and then the model number.
It tells you how many memory slots you have and the types and speeds of memory your computer can take. It can't tell you how many memory slots are currently in use or how many empty slots you have to add memory. If the system scanner doesn't work on your computer, you will have to open the case and take a look. The type of memory is an absolute. If your computer has DDR3 memory, you need to add DDR3 memory. If you have DDR2 memory, you need to add DDR2 memory. You can't mix different types of memory. In fact, the wrong type of memory won't even fit into the slot. The bandwidth or speed of the memory is a different story. For most computers, there will be a few different memory speeds to choose from. It's important to find out what speed of memory your computer has, because the system's memory will only run as fast as the slowest stick of memory in the system. For instance, on this computer, the site says it can take PC3-8500, PC3-10600, and PC3-12800 memory. The 8500, 10600, and 12800 refers to the memory bandwidth the memory can handle, which is measured in megabytes, or MB per second. Memory speed and bandwidth are directly related. We will cover this in Lesson 2. Let's say the memory this computer has is PC3-10600, and I, without checking, get PC3-8500 memory. All of the memory will work together, but the speed of all of the memory in the system will only run at the bandwidth of the slowest memory in the system. So my 10,600 megabyte per second memory will slow down to run at 8,500 megabytes per second. On the other hand, if I pay extra to get 12,800 megabyte per second memory and add it to the 10,600 megabyte per second memory in my system, the new memory that is capable of running at 12,800 megabytes per second will come down to the 10,600 megabytes per second bandwidth. Let's go over what we know so far about the memory in my computer. It is DDR3, 3 gigabytes in capacity, from three 1 gigabyte sticks of memory already in the system, and there are three empty memory slots I can add memory to. We'll cover memory bandwidths, speeds, and other features of memory in Lesson 2. And make sure you know how to find the information you need to buy the correct memory for your system. In Lesson 3, we'll show you more places to buy online, and we will install memory into a desktop computer. In Lesson 4, we will upgrade the memory on another desktop and a laptop computer.